Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Music Lab Podcast. My name is Dog, and I'm here with the boys from Zach Edwards and the Medicine. Boys, welcome. Hey, man, how's it going? Thanks so we are in awesome, this, this city, Lafayette, Louisiana. I must say, I got into town yesterday. We went to the festival. Just a great, great city. You guys played last night. Talk about the show. Talk about this city. Like, what, what this city means to you guys. Man, I moved here from Houston, bounced around to New Orleans, to Oakdale, and I stayed here because uh, you, there's not a lot of places that are bringing in international acts like that. That was my favorite part, like, watching this Korean band just – music just is a language that transcends uh, – all like you know barriers or whatever and yeah just, when you said that instrument that they played talk oh, about that right it was like a, a bass instrument but it looked like a lap steel and judging on how he pressed the strings down made the pitch change and there's instruments on stage i can't even tell you what they were there's the one that kind of sounds like a horse you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I, I don't know. oh crazy. yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. i know crazy what you're yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah man that's good so what about for you what's what, what's What's the city mean to you? Uh, so I'm I'm from Abbeville, which is just south of Lafayette, yeah. but not really being in the scene until this past few years. Um, it's it's been remarkable. I mean, you know, it, I there was always this stigma to me that oh, Lafayette was very cliquish. You know, if you weren't from Lafayette, you weren't doing anything in Lafayette. And with me not being from Lafayette and able to do all this, I'm like, wow, y'all really very open arms, mm -hmm. very open minded. Um, just you know. They love us, you know, and so we've been really grateful for that, especially myself, you know, and we've built a, you know, good friendship with all the businesses in town and uh, and also the people, you know, they, they really enjoy us. So to me, it's Lafayette's a new home for me. Um, and it's it, it's cool. It's great. You know, there's a, a wholesome nature to it, too. Like people got gardens in their front yard. And when you walk down the street, they want to talk to you. It's not like what you doing. Get out of here. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a welcoming vibe. Right? Yeah, totally. No, I was when I was at the donut shop this morning. The line was out the door, and every time somebody walked up, they saw how long the line was, and they looked at me and they were like, "Everybody wanted donuts today, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> it's Donut Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah. every single person. <laughs> festival weekend will bring out the donuts. Well, right? and like I said, uh, that this is a big weekend, and Festival Cadian the fall is a big weekend. But every weekend, there's music in the city, and you could come here and not know that. It's kind of like you have to look at look look for it you have to want to yeah. be involved in that kind of stuff and so the people who do show up to live music events in the city like want to be there they didn't just stumble or get you know not they don't they don't not want to be there everybody's right it's not it. the part of a bachelorette party or right something like that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like nashville or vegas or yes yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so the venue last night talk about that and you know some exciting news right yeah so uh that's hideaway only which is on the avenue downtown lafayette really really cool spot they just opened up either right before covid or right at the beginning of covid happened okay. uh but they were outdoor venues so they could really yeah. do whatever they wanted so they capitalized on covering everything uh making it nice open very fresh air um but great venue really nice hip spot that's in town uh we just actually got a six-week residency there um so our next show is actually with the debtors we're going to do, uh, I think in June, in the June, we're going to play with them. Awesome. And then another show, another six weeks after that, it will be with uh, another band, uh, Bad Bongo. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, it, it's it's definitely the spot in town. You know, it's it's very small, but it's very impactful. You know, you have really good shows there. It's homey. It's nice in there. It's yeah. like your home within mm -hmm. the bigger home of Lafayette, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, you got like two homes, man. Exactly. It's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about like COVID and how like this town and like how you guys, you know, managed that and worked around that. So I that you to... was living in new Orleans, moved back to Houston cause that city just kind of like chewed me up, spit me out. And then, uh, when COVID first happened, like right when it happened, I drove to Oakdale cause my friends throw a music festival over there and it was just like 12 musicians, like a musician's camp. We called it rock and roll boot camp, And that was our home base. And I think that's where I kind of like honed it in a lot. Okay. So that's where I spent most of COVID was over there and small towns. People had outdoor venues. You could still play and just like hole in the walls over there. So from there, I made my way to Lafayette. But yeah. How about you? Uh, so actually for me, 
COVID happened, I just started this little project and I was like, all right, well, I want to play music. I want, I want it to be more involved. And uh, when things kind of open back up, there's a lot of outdoor restaurants. were like, hey, we need music. So I hit up with my buddies and I was like, hey, man, let me play. I got a little band. I was like, I'll do it for free. You know, I just want to play music. And uh, well, after that, I realized, I was like, dude, I can actually like, make money doing this. Like, you know, uh, and so this little indie project, you know, nothing spectacular, but right. a great little band called Eagle Street. Um, and we were just, I was really pushing. I was like, let's play it wherever, wherever we can, you know, make some cash. Um, let's have fun. And then uh, that's actually how I met Zach. We had a show together at Blue Moon Saloon. And uh, and <laughs> it's funny, I tell this story all the time, but we he opened up for us. And after we were like, we need to go practice. Like, like, like it was, it was, it was encouraging, but it was discouraging because you know, oh, we have to play after this. Like, we can't top that, you know. Um, and then immediately, uh, a few weeks later, he hit me up. He's like, hey man, I need somebody to fill in for me. And then after that, I was like, let me be your full time drummer. I'll drop my other project. I'll come play with you. Um, you know, it, it was no bad blood stuff, but right. you know, I, I, I seen all the potential in him and the fact that he was like, Hey man, can you come play for me? You like, played 75 shows in the year, our first year as a band. Yeah. Just we did a lot. 75 getting shows. It. Yeah. Getting it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, yeah. Once, once we started, we did not stop, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and granted, you know, this is Zach's full-time career too. So, you know, I, me and him do a lot of the booking. And so, in my mind, I was like, okay, cool. I, you know, I'm responsible for helping him make sure he's taken care of getting mm-hmm. work and stuff. So that really pushed us to like, hey, let's keep playing. Yeah. And that way with us consistently playing, that was our way of marketing ourselves. You know, I know a lot of bands, they try not to play too much because you can get oversaturated, you know. Uh, luckily, you know, we, we have a very high energy, upscale vibe. Um, so it just it's, it's always a party. It's always a blast, you know. And uh, luckily for him and then Austin, he, he isn't here today. His harmonica, dude. I mean, he, you know, people love him, and yeah. it's it's a crowd pleaser. And um, so, luckily, like I said, for that, that was our marketing. That was like, you know, and a lot of people that know us now, they were like, dude, we didn't know who y'all were, but we saw y'all everywhere. We were like, who, you know, who the hell is this band? What are they doing that we aren't doing? You know, and it's Friday, they're playing somewhere. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so then, in turn, I mean, we have made so many friends, you know, just by that, you know, in you know, word of mouth, and that's. I'm really grateful for that. You yeah, know? right when co- like right when things started opening up again, we were just like yes to every show that you get. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter what the pay was. We were just, things were open again. I was just happy to be on stage. Yeah, it sounds like you kind of built a foundation during like that that first run, mm-hmm. which then led to correct where we're at now. Right? Yeah. I mean, die yeah. hard people that wanted you know that missed that. I think right. it's you know sad as COVID was and but it did something that shifted things where people who are getting stagnant learned to appreciate it all over again. I did. I was getting stagnant. I've been doing it for four years and was kind of burnt out. And yeah. I think everybody needed that break. And you can tell, like, the music that has come out in the past, like, six months, even go <laughs> even go far back as a year, mm-hmm. you know, when great despair, you know, always comes great mm-hmm. creativity. And, like, you know, there, there's just such a explosion of great new music that's exactly so yeah you know it is it's, it is you know for as much as COVID was a, a downfall it, it really has become from from a music perspective this kind of reawakening and people have time right? to practice new musicians right. yep. everywhere right. Right? Like, yeah yeah it went yeah, from like 10 15 original music bands in Lafayette to it's just exploded and now it's people went younger than us you know I'm not too old but younger than us like you know it's just cool to see that it's, it's getting Picking yeah. yeah. So so let's talk about songwriting. So are you guys more music first and then lyrics? Are we more lyrics first than music, or does it depend on the song? You know, talk write, about that 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 process. I write lyrics like a lot, um, but sometimes they're complete songs. Sometimes they're just little ideas. Sometimes the song comes first and then on stage, I just kind of mess with the lyrics until something sticks. Okay. Uh, that was like, we wrote a song three or four days ago, uh, <laughs> right before that Thursday show. And uh, I didn't, I don't know what I sang the words last night, but I just knew it was a good song. I was like, we need to play it. But sometimes they're written on stage. Um, a lot of times it's just, I bring these guys an idea and I'm like, here's the idea. And then they turn it into something cool. 
Yeah, so it's a collective experience. Mm -hmm. it's it is definitely it is. not a uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. and we're we're branching out too. I wanted like Jared writes his own songs, Austin's been writing his own songs. Okay. Like we're gonna, you know, it's gonna move around a lot more okay. in the future. So let's talk about the future a little bit. Um, what about like what should, should your fans and, and audience expect, you know, music wise? Are, are we um so we only have five songs. Well, I like we have six songs recorded, yep. but I don't know, we probably got another 20 originals or so that just we're we're lazy on the aspect of getting the studio. Uh it's, it's a whole new ball game. We are really a live band, so like we just were let's get good at doing that part first. Yeah. But going in the studio, I get test anxiety. And then, you know, I can play it perfect live and then you go into the studio and I get nervous and shaky. So we're working those nerves out. Okay. Um, we need a live show recording. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we do. But uh, lots of new music coming. Gotcha. Just uh, kind of let it solidify first. And, and in all honesty, that's not a bad way to to release some original stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. because it, you know, if you not if, but you are such a great live band, you know, let the audience that hasn't seen you in person, you know, experience some of that, as yeah. well as like give them a taste of new music as well. Yeah. well yeah. They they know the songs too. My friend Tom's like, oh, tell me what you need. It's such a great song. That's like one of your best songs. And that one's not recorded. Right. Really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's cool to hear because I that's you know I wouldn't say that without that song. Oh, I, I somebody that else's song. favorite song. And yeah. for me, like because I haven't seen you guys live, like that's all I've listened to is the studio stuff. So yeah, yeah like it is it is yeah. interesting to see you know hear those perspectives from. We from have uh, we have one. It's called Snake Oil Salesman, oh, okay. and it, it, it's 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 a banger. It's really cool. It's, Zach does this cool riff on it. Well, some of our good friends that we made through seeing us live. Yeah. Uh, our last show at Rock and Bowl, they were front and center singing every lyric. They they knew the song, and I was like, "Man, we, we don't even have this recorded, you know." But y'all know it, you know. My so buddy Scooter after that show sent me a cover of that song. He doesn't have a recording of it, and he went home that night and just played till he could play the song. Wow, it's yeah. cool. It's cool. Yeah. So obviously he's got some chops as well. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. Is he in a band or he just fiddles around? He's or? been he's been fiddling around for a while. But he's a music band in his town. Like I think he lives out in Eunice. Yeah, like that's that. good ways. Yeah. Everybody's like Scooter's the guitar guy. You know. And okay. He's yeah. been saying, "Let me hop up there and play with y'all." It's gonna yeah. happen soon. <laughs> his uh, I was I was in Eunice where he lives at a few weeks ago doing our radio interview, and he hit me up. He's like, "Hey man, I know you're in town. Please come stop by." And I was like, yeah, dude, I'll come stop by. So I stopped by his house, and uh, his little boy, he's, I don't know, I think nine or ten, loves us, huge fan. Mm -hmm. oh, and sweet. after I left, he texted me, he's like, dude, he's like, uh, I forget his little boy's name, uh, apologies, but he's like, man, he's like, he is so ecstatic. He t already called all his friends, like, hey, Hunter from Medicine. We're going to play came. his birthday party. Yeah, yeah they're like, <laughs> oh, wow. you know, it's, it's really cool. We're really like, cool, man. Yeah. So when's his birthday? Uh, it's coming it's in June, out. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. you know. It's just funny because you know we're we're just you know some dudes playing music right, you know right, like right, right, right. you know we, we're not trying to change the world right? yeah yeah, right. yeah so but it's it's crazy to think you know some little, little young man like this you know we we have an impact on his life so hopefully if we do impact lives it's it's for a good reason you know and it's through music so uh, dude I can completely relate because yesterday at the debtor show was the first time that I had uh, like people come up to me and recognize me like in public. Yeah. yeah. They're like, hey, you do the podcast. Yeah. Blah, blah. Like I get that. Like it, it was such a like a rewarding feeling. And like I think I told I think I told you, Hunter, like at South by when I when we were interviewing all these bands and all the bands that we did for the Road to South by series, all 35 of them were so like appreciative that we did it, first of all. And then like just that they were thankful that we were there, that we mm -hmm. showed up to see them live. You know, not yeah. just to like, you know, do an episode about them, but like mm -hmm. then so, you know, it is, it really is a great, great, like reassuring feeling to do like, you know, what you're doing. So you, you whether do you're a musician or, you know, talking about music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do it because it needs to be done and everything else is just a byproduct of that. And that's like a way more healthier attitude than being like, I have to get somewhere now. It's like, I'm doing this because someone needs to be doing it. And also like be selfish too. It's, it's therapy for us. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, it's a creative outlet for all of us. It, what, you know, like it's. It, to be honest, it is so addicting to play a live show. <laughs> it is, uh, you know, I'll... I'll the high, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, it, so I didn't sleep till 4.30. Yeah. yeah. My, poor thing, my wife, you know, she loves me and I love her and I'm, I'm grateful she lets me play music. But <laughs> someday she's like, oh, 
got another show and i'm like yep i'm going to another show you know like you know or uh, i'll see you in four hours yeah you know, <laughs> shit some days it's you know 10 hours so yeah, it's, right. it's a long day but you know uh you know and I, i'm i'm working on it but i forget to tell her like oh crap i got a show tonight you know I'm text her that morning like hey i won't be home tonight you know uh she's like all right cool you know and but it, it works out so so i know like obviously it's all been like all we've talked about is just how great everything is but there's got to be a, a story that either you know a venue did you wrong or like a car <laughs> trouble or like yeah, I gotta, yeah, yeah gotta, it's, it's a little sore subject <laughs> yeah, are we I okay mean, to share it then <laughs> every venue has its pros and cons yes. uh, but there's just yeah horror stories and stink man. i played a, i'm not gonna name the town not gonna name the venue yep but it was this little small hole in the wall and someone came and flicked my harmonica player, uh, you know. And his, him, and his groin, and yeah. Good song, is that what you said? Tried to hit him in the nads. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. While he was playing? On stage. Yeah, it was a joke, but it just, I lost it for a second. That was the first night I sat in with him, so I had been on stage. <laughs> we hadn't even played a song yet. I, was, I had just gotten my guitar ready, and then I see this guy, he's a six-foot-tall dude jumping on stage trying to attack austin and i was like i didn't know that they knew each other and they had history i was i had my guitar i was literally about to smack him we with the guitar about it now. Dude, we all laugh about it now but you know in the heat of the moment i'm i've been a hothead before so <laughs> it was a lot but it's funny i i didn't play that show it was uh I was either sick or it was my little boy's birthday so i didn't i couldn't make it well okay. he calls me like the next morning he's like hey man <sighs> I don't know if you heard, you know, I'm like, what's wrong? Are you, like, are you okay? You know, like, you know. Uh, yeah, right. Should I be concerned? Yeah, yeah. So, like, he, he tells me, and I'm like, oh, you know, what a jackass. You know, like, uh, I was like, well, is, you know, are you good? Is everybody else good? And I'm like, yeah, dude, you know. Okay, cool. Well, you know, uh, get through it, you know. At but the it's, end of the day, that's rock and roll, baby. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, it's rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. Rock and roll. Um, no, but like you, you know, you talk about the cons. I mean, we've we've had our share with you know cycling people in and out. You know, I mean that you know it's, it all bands. You know, it's, some people click at first, and you know they change or different things happen, and you yeah. see you it's know an entity, and just like anybody else, things you go through different phases of yeah. your life. That's a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but but you know, luckily, you know, we we strive on trying to keep friendships you know like you know nothing is ever should be personal you know um you know but we you know we're grateful for everybody who's been along for the journey and who's helped us and you know jammed out with us and did whatever they could you know at that time um but you know i mean it's just you know as long as we keep pushing forward you know we don't let you know negativity drag us down you know we 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 got it you know keep on rolling and that's just something we say frequently is our friendships are first and there's times where we got to put a business hat on, but that's what I want because I started this thinking that I, oh, I want a full band. I want a full band. I was doing this all by myself, hiring people every show. And I think what I really wanted was friends and now I got them. So I was like, there's that part. It's very satisfying. I thought that I needed all this other stuff, but I really just needed friendship, you know? So was it a moment that that, that, that kind of sunk in or was that more gradual or, or can you remember like the time when that kind of, that feeling came up, came Seeing, I mean, I don't want to cry. Uh, <laughs> I was not in a good place always. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy really helped me out of that, you know. And, and so did my girlfriend. So did, like, I moved here thinking, like, I'm going to get my career off the ground. And what I really wanted was friendship. And, like, I don't know, that's a slap in the face, but it's a good slap. Like, I needed that. Like, mm-hmm. enjoy every second. It's not about trying to get somewhere. It's about being here you know right it's it's a marathon not a sprint absolutely. right yeah yeah, absolutely. Man. yeah 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 so um outside of lafayette then a favorite venue that you've played or a venue that's really like stuck out in your mind like man this mobile is a great cool. show mobile was really cool <laughs> uh we did south sounds just a few weeks ago okay uh, it's a music festival we played right before uh jojo herman of widespread panic yeah um our buddy chris schwall hooked us up with that gig that was you know, for now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it wasn't like a massive festival, but it was it was very where we needed to be. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like just in this month, like, like oh, okay, like things are moving. You know, like okay, right. so you know, different people notice different things, and um, so it helped good to branch out in that area too. So, 
Um, Mobile feels real nice. It's a clean, clean city. Like I've never seen a city. So I'm from Houston, so it's like right. it's a little muddy out there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's clean and it's beautiful, and the people. Are Mo- Mobile is definitely a way cleaner, like Bourbon Street. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Very, okay. very artistic, very cultural. You know, with what they have there. Um, you know, um, they weren't as you know coon ass. You know, for sure. <laughs> but um, you know, just very clean, very nice. Um, but there's, I mean, art all over that downtown section of Mobile, oh, okay. so it's cool. Yeah. All right. So did you get to meet Mr. Herman then? No. He came up to me, and I, I mean, I love to say whatever on this. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, drop bomb. I was yeah, maybe or maybe not indulging in marijuana. And sure. Joe, Joe Herman came up to me, and the only thing he said to me was, hey, you're not allowed to do that here. And I kind of got scared for a second, and then he went, ah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Because he knew that was going to be oh, a yeah, reaction. He knew. Oh, he knew. my God. I did not know that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, geez. So, so you, we t- you kind of touched a little bit on social media earlier, but talk about, like, how that is so pivotal, especially, like, nowadays with technology and how we're moving and how, like... I, I was talking to somebody last night, and I, honestly, I would prefer if we didn't have to strive off of social yeah. media because I found like word of mouth was so much more impactful. It can all be gone in a moment. If it's it's not so empty, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, I'll admit myself, like I, it's, it's not a fun thing or like, it's not a part of the job that I enjoy. You yeah. know, I, yeah. I, I you can't much put too much just, weight into it, you know? It's, yeah. It's I just, just feel like, and one of the bands that I interviewed said, and I, I thought that this was well said, he said, he, it's a fine line between speaking to your audience and selling to your audience. Mm-hmm. And I like, oh, I like that's, that. it's a, it is, it's a very, you yeah. don't want to overdo it, but you also, you know, you also realize that you are a, a commodity and, Correct. you know, for that to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Luckily, you know, like we've, we've been lucky on the social media aspect where it, you know, algorithm works in our favor most times, you mm-hmm. know, and, People see our content and they like it. If and... you're a coming up band, pay just a little bit for the ads because the ads will boost you in the algorithm. And mm-hmm. then you don't have to do it every time because right. you're boosting the algorithm. As yeah. silly as it is, you got to yeah. play the game. Play the game, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. And the consistency helps out a lot, posting all <laughs> yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, But we know this, you know, social media can be, you know, a front too. you know, you could, you know, popping off on social media, but it's not hitting the right people, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, like we'll have some posts, tons of likes, but like I hit my friends, I'm like, Hey man, we're playing. Like, Oh dang. Like, I don't know you're playing. I was like, dang, okay, cool. I, you know, it is. So it's weird how some of that works, you know, and you know, the the message might hit a whole different audience, you know, than the one that's like, Hey, we're in Lafayette, but none of the Lafayette people see mm-hmm. it. So, right. Yeah. Uh, the, all the New Orleans people will see it, you know, or Houston people. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man, they're, they're doing great this yeah, weekend. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, we're like, oh, it's for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but no, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's social media has definitely just become, like I was saying, it's, it, it's part of the business now, yeah. you know. Um, and you, you either got to work with it, you know, unless you're some underground band who doesn't really. Uh, thrive off of that mm-hmm. um, you know you really got to work with it to stay in the, the spotlight of things in the first year there was definitely like I'm trying to get healthier with that whole social media thing because the first year there was definitely like a, just learning how to do it what's too much what's too little mm-hmm. um, and then same thing kind of going back to like friendship was what I really wanted like you connections what I really wanted like the more branch out in Lafayette and hang out with all these people I it's that's that's how you get your you know Mm -hmm. it's a community it's not and i i don't know there was definitely an unhealthy attachment to when you're not playing a gig that day so i'm gonna scroll on instagram for hours pretending like i need to be there because my you know Mm -hmm. it's just i want to to find this healthy balance hunter really handles a lot of the instagram stuff too so he gives me the opportunity to be like i'm turning my phone off today but yeah yeah it is. It, it's. It is just a, a nature of the business that that you know you, you have to. It's inevitable, but mm-hmm. yeah. Unfortunately, when there's people popping up with it'll they're like my buddy Mason. Uh, he's like, I'll come over and I'll make you reels and I'll make you like and it's stuff like that. I yeah. think it's worth paying because mm-hmm. it's not even in your hands like to deal with. Yeah, 
and and it's great too when you can use your music as part of you know it's not just like you know information you know it's yeah. not just like mm-hmm. you're, you're passing on information you're you know you're and i like to try to be well. funny on the internet too try to make little skit little I don't know. Just being funny makes you real, you know. And so if you're goofy, people are like, "Oh, he's goofy too, man." Don't take you know. So serious. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, we're, we're all, whether people want to like, "Oh, they're rock stars," or you know, they're you know, they're conceited or whatever. And it's like we do our best to just, like I said, we're just some good old boys <laughs> playing music. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever comes out of it comes out of it. You know. Yeah. You do what you love. I'm, this is what I'm doing, and I love it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think the stories are cool because I feel like people put less effort into like making them clean and perfect, so they're a little rough around the edges. And you can <laughs> you can do the goofy stuff. And two, after 24 hours, no one's gonna care anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah it all gets away. Yeah. 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 So, um, last question, and this is more about again like the songwriting process. So, a song like Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, the it, that song is almost like sectioned and i feel like a lot of your songs again this is only the studio stuff that i hear i feel like it's it's almost like um pieces of pie that are then put into one whole pie <laughs> like sections like it's very your your transitions are are remarkable and like how you kind of so talk about that. Is that intentional or is that kind of like organic or they happen on the fly a lot of the times when we play in the riff we like and we're like, well, where does it go to turn around or where does it go to change it up? Um so yeah, it's intentional, but it kind of is like spontaneously intentional. Yeah, I mean And then during the live show, is that then is that it like accentuated then? Oh, or is I'm, that I'm whispering scary? to Hunter in the bass, but I'm whispering to all the guys, okay, go back to that. Okay, go to mm-hmm. here. Actually, Jerry okay. take a solo now. We're all like orchestrating it yeah, all. Yeah. It's, it's very jam bandy, you know. Like we, there's only like one or two songs we play exactly the same every time. Every other time, it's always different. Well, you know, some might be a little bit longer. You know, Benny makes a comment, not a negative way, but he's like, "I never know if it's before or six, You know, you know, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So you know, depends on how much time stage changes. I mean, uh, no, no, okay. the, not on purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> The only only weird time song is, is whipping post that we do. Um, the songs are becoming more complex. So that's like that, you know that's our freshman release. Mm-hmm. I think that the next thing you'll see from us will be a little bit more. Baptized in Blood is in a different uh, Ooh, time signature. Yeah, it is. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Six eight. I don't know. So but, yeah. No, not four. So yeah, it's probably <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's something a little bit different. But yeah, yeah. Um, um, it's the same. And who wrote that song? It's gotten, okay. Yeah, well, I had some a buddy help me write it, but uh, you know, I always thought that songwriting is something I had to do by myself, and uh, just like everything, my buddy, a collaborative effort. Yeah. My buddy Gino V, amazing musician around here, plays drums and sings. Okay, uh, makes love songs like nobody's business. Um, he collabs with all you know the heavy hitters around here, and I was like, what have I been doing? You know, like, we went and wrote a song the other day, and it was fun, and it was one of those different songs I've written, and. Uh, I want to do more of that, definitely. So are there any songs that you wrote pre this band that mm-hmm. you uh, have brought into the... 15 of them. Oh, uh, oh, okay. 10, 15. We don't even play all of them anymore. But, okay. Um, I had a lot yeah, in, yeah. The, in the bank. I still do, that. we got to go sit down and figure out, but... I go see him at singer songwriter nights and he has the, his acoustic guitar and he's playing all kinds of songs I've never heard <laughs> all his songs. Yeah, that's, he's I got a, two song, wrote two songs a day. So I'm not saying I try to do that, but I try to I'll come up with a line and it'll just be one little thing. Like Austin Thibodeau said to me the other day, if you don't use it, you lose it. If you use it, you bruise it. And that's just been in the back of my head. And eventually that'll be a song. But it's like I'll just write it down in my notes and let it marinate. Yeah. But, takes a second sometimes i like that yeah yeah that's yeah. that's got good possibility yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had a buddy tell me you write if you want to do like a writing exercise you write out your song titles one through how many songs you want to write 10 you write out one through 10 you write out the song titles before you even know what the songs are going to be about yeah and then based on the song titles you write songs and it's like almost like a prompt and that helps a lot too okay um that's fun so, favorite cover song to play? I know you don't do many covers, but... We do quite a few. Um, 
I guess right now, because we're going to get to a point where we're like, all right, we don't want to do the song no more. We're yeah. doing too much. Yeah, uh, and if I ask you the question in three months, it might be a different yeah, answer. So yeah. that's fine with that. No, absolutely. right now it's, it's probably with It's with yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and luckily all of our friends that we, you know, Robbie last night, which is Jared's friend, he's a phenomenal guitar player. He hopped up on stage and took exactly the to play the song with Jared. Oh, and... Like, it's just one of those songs we know, like, hey, we can get anybody to come play this with mm -hmm. us, you know, or come do a verse with us. Thursday night, we had this uh, guy named Shay Beard, and he came up and sang a few verses with us at the Grouse Room. So that was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that song, it starts off with a bass, you know, boom, 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 boom. you know, uh, every time we do it, somebody's in the crowd, like, oh, crap, you know, like, it's, you know, they're, they're getting yeah. excited, you know. So, I think... That's why I think it's so fun because people just love it so much. Uh, and where do we sprinkle that usually in the set then? Is that it's the last, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, the, yes. it's the last song. Grand finale. Yeah. 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 And now we can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what typically, if you didn't cover, or if you didn't play that song less, what typically of your songs do you play less? Or is that not like a... Pay Your Homage is one because it's, yeah. it's kind of like... There's a, there's that would have been my idea. Yeah, that would have been my idea. Yeah, that, that inverse, uh, respect your body, respect your neighbor. That just feels good to end on. And, and sweet music, dude. Mm -hmm. What a great, yeah. like, like yeah. yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Guys, this has been so much fun. Thank, Thank you, you so much for doing this. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Um, guys, this is Zach Edwards and The Medicine. Check them out on Spotify. Check them out. Buy their merch. Support them. They are amazing. I have been Dog. This is the Music Lab Podcast. Thank you all. Good night.